Hello and welcome to Miss Charlotte Astrology. I'm Miss Charlotte, a full-time working astrologer, and on this channel I analyze astrological charts of public figures, and very often they are celebrities, and that 100% is the case today. As so I'll be analyzing someone who is very famous for talking about the famous, and that is uh, Wendy Williams, who she, I, I believe she was a, a very prominent disc jockey uh, back in the 90s. Is that right? She worked in New York and she, she had a radio station and she would interview celebrities and talk trash about them. And um, she was kind of like a, like a, like a female Howard Stern. Now I'm not American. So obviously, like, this is just, this is just my perception of her that's that's what I gather from that because I don't I don't know much about her radio days uh, because I've actually found her through television when I was living in Shanghai for five years I was I was so sick of Chinese TV there was barely anything in English there was barely anything entertaining and I came across her TV show on YouTube when she had um when she had her TV show like it was at its peak in like 2014 2015 and they would put the episodes on her channel and I would just watch them and I just thought it was f I just thought she was so entertaining and charming and she just she's she is just so straightforward and honest there's like this earnestness and even when she was vulgar and when she was rude and when she, like there was just, just something so charming and effervescent about Wendy Williams and I'm always rooting for her like I don't care what anyone says I really like Wendy I think she is a sweet person I'm looking at her chart now I think she's a sweetheart I I'm not saying she's perfect you know like she can be a little bit bitchy I get it like she was in the gossip um, she was doing the gossip for years. I can I understand that, but she is a great entertainer, and I think it's at the heart of her, to her core, she is actually a good person, just with a lot of issues. I remember when I was working in an office with a lot of Americans, um, and I, I had uh, and I was working with quite a few African American colleagues as well, and um, um, one of my one of these colleagues, he was a man, said to me, oh, Wendy Williams, you know, she's a bitch and she's going to get it coming to her one day, like F her and I hope she, awful things happen to her. And I'm like, what, bro? Like, what did she do? Did she burn down an orphanage? That's my go-to when people start talking trash about other people. I'm like, what did this person do, burn down an orphanage? Like, you make her out, you're making her out to be like Hitler or something. So, um, and he was like, you know, she was just like, being mean like like that was the worst offense in the world and I was like is that it she just talks some trash on some radio but doesn't Howard Stern do exactly the same thing doesn't he bring people on his shows and have ugly people contests like that's in <laughs> I feel like Howard Stern should be should be cancelled not Wendy Williams Wendy Williams is so much tamer and so much I think much more charming and much more entertaining than Howard Stern anyway that's my opinion and I love Wendy Williams. And there's nothing you can say to make me take back that opinion because I have a chart in front of me and I can see some ugly things. I can see some crappy things. I get it. But I'm always rooting for her. You know, she's like the every woman in my heart. So Wendy Williams, if you ever see this, I love you. Call me. I'll read your chart for free. I won't charge you. I love you. All right. Um, so but oh, before I dive in, I just want you guys to know I do chart readings, 60 minute Zoom readings. They are recorded, so you don't have to take notes and you can just sit back, relax, and we can laugh and cry about your chart. Um, it's the best way to support me is to purchase a reading because I don't do anything else. I don't. I also do 20 minute readings. Uh, they are recorded and um they are sent to your email, so you don't even need to meet me. You can just listen to my voice, tear up your chart. And it's, it's also the more, um, uh, it's the less expensive option, just in case you're a bit worried about, oops, I don't want to spend too much money. Well, that one's half the price, so it's all there. I'll link it all below. I appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. I'll link that below as well. I'm very active on there. There is content I put on my Instagram that I don't put on here. If you, and it's, it's written, and it's very visual. And it's pretty. So please go on there. That was my first platform, actually. YouTube's my second. So yeah, go, go, go. Thank you. Like, comment, subscribe, because I'm trying to build this platform. So I can turn it into like a salary. That would be great. Anyway, let's dive into Wendy Williams' chart. Look at this woman. Aquarius rising. That's why she's an odd beauty. And yes, she is beautiful. I don't give a crap. I'm so sick. Like... 
Aquarius risings, people are either going to think they're hideous or they're gorgeous. Like, think Audrey Hepburn, right? And I know she's like one of the, like, she's, she's one of the great beauty icons. But if you really break it down, she kind of looks like an alien. Like, if you really, she look she's tall, she's skinny, weird bug eyes, but it all worked. And she was stunning. Like, Aquarius risings are not typical beauties. And that's why some people think they're ugly, because they don't fit into the norms of beauty. And I think with Wendy Williams, her height and I mean, how would I how would I describe her with these fantastic cheekbones and like I just and these like she has these huge, gorgeous, like alien eyes. And I know she can she can make her eyes pop, right? She's got some syndrome that makes her eyes. Anyway, she's an odd looking woman, but I think she's beautiful. I think she's just I like she's very and you know, more than anything. Let's take away, like, whether she's pretty or ugly. She's charismatic, right? And an Aquarius rising can be a very charismatic rising sign. And I, I think looking odd, it, it, it plays into that really well. So, and she's going to be mouthing off and, and, and she's going to be challenging the norms and doing her own thing, like, and be very engaging, but also be very polarizing. That's Aquarius rising. That's her mask. That's her weaponry. That's how she enters the world with a kaboom, with a bang, with an earthquake. Like, that's who Wendy William is up front, you know. That's the first layer of her. That's how I like to think of a rising sign. That's the first layer of you, and it is shock. She's a shock jock, literally. That's what she was. So that makes sense with her Aquarius rising. Um, her midheaven is in Sagittarius. So that is the sign that governs, like, publishing and publicity, um, the ruler of it is Jupiter, and where's Jupiter? In the third house of talking, speaking. Midheaven ruler, which is Sagittarius, the midheaven ruler, um, sorry, the midheaven ruler in Sagittarius, the midheavens in Sagittarius with the ruler, Jupiter, in the third house of talking and writing and communicating and gossiping. So that makes a lot of sense. And I am um, generally Sagittarius midheavens. They make really good teachers, advisors. Um, they're very known for their wisdom. And I remember watching her show, even when she would talk gossip, it wouldn't just be gossip. It would be like advice to the celebrities she was trash talking. Like, you know, um, I remember she would talk about Britney Spears all the time and she'd be like, this is what I would do. Like, <laughs> which is very Sagittarius, like that, that wise older person that's going to guide you. That's the energy. It's very Gandalf, you know? Um, and with the Midheaven ruler in the third house of speech and communication and, uh, uh, yeah, that, 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 what does she do for a living? She communicates. She uses her mind and her mouth, right? She talks. Midheaven ruler in the third house. She makes money from her mind and her words. Straightforward. Good. Um, let's talk about her addictive personality. So this is what I noticed. Moon in the ninth house. Moon lies in a it's a it's got a big orb. I'm gonna say it's a conjunction. I know technically it's not, but they are together. They are together, so I'm going to call it a conjunction just because they're in the same house and they're together. They affect each other. The moon represents the home and the family and one's emotional needs and emotional processing. I feel like she's someone that has always wanted to live a very foreign lifestyle. Maybe not literally overseas, but she's just someone that was like, I want to do big things. I want to live in the big city. I want to have an exciting life. And a Venus, um, a, a, a moon in Sagittarius very often moves away from home and they, um, they go to that big city or even that small town far, far away. Like they have a very adventurous life. It's very, um, what's the word? Uh, co like very cosmopolitan almost. It can be, I think with the moon and the night, she's always perpetually dissatisfied. And I even wonder with her parents and I, I, I do understand that because I've watched her show, she talks very lovingly of her parents. Um, she, and I think they're good parents and I think they loved her and surely they loved each other, you know. But I'm wondering if her mum was not that happy. I'm wondering if the mum had to put up with a lot of shit because Wendy ended up marrying a piece of crap that did horrible things to her, cheated on her, stole from her allegedly. And I'm wondering if she was replicating 
a relationship that her mum had with her dad. She she hasn't. I haven't heard her speak ill of her dad. If you know anything about her family and the dynamic between her mother and her father, can you put it in the comments below? Because I'm not sure. But you always repeat. You always. Um, there's some element of your parents' relationship that plays out in your relationships, right? It's kind of like a child trying to heal, heal its wounds. It grows up and it's trying to fix daddy or fix mummy. And I'm wondering what happened with that. Like, did did, did dad cheat? Because did her father cheat on her mother and they stayed together? And that's why Wendy stayed in this awful marriage for such a long time. And she knew that her husband had a baby with someone else and she stayed like, oh, what a nightmare. So yeah, um, just a moon in the ninth house is someone who's perpetually dissatisfied, even though it's in Scorpio and she really desires having stability. It's not in a stable house. So she's going to be put in situations that are very unstable and very public because it is a public house as well. Like her home, her home, the dysfunction at home and in her marriage is going to be public fodder in the ninth house of publications, which is the which is the Sagittarius house. She's got a Sagittarius midheaven and in the Sagittarius house, she has her moon. So she's one of the reasons why she is so famous is because of her emotional nature. Like she's, there's an unpredictability and an intensity about her emotions, but also how her public, her private life plays out in public as well. And her feuds as well, like uh, her interpersonal relationships, her friendships, her in, like it's going to play out. Uh, Neptune with the moon in this conjunction, not really, but they're together. Um, that's, that is someone who's trying to numb the pain. She's a very sensitive person. She's someone that she will march on and she'll get the job done and she'll do it high or drunk, but she'll get through it. And sometimes very often she can get a, get, get away with it and pull off a really good show. Most of the time she did, but the cracks started to show a few years ago when she was fainting and getting sick on camera. And it was just, it was an absolute nightmare and a mess. And I just, it was very hard to watch. It was very like this poor woman was just falling apart. Um, but yeah, I reckon with this moon Neptune conjunction, there is a lack of boundaries in her relationships. And it's not just someone who's infringing upon her boundaries or her infringing upon someone else's boundaries, or even though I, I do think that has happened. It also shows just, um, uh, you know, a, a family or a, a marriage or like, because the moon represents those things, the intimate world. It's like, it's, it's a nightmare. Like there's betrayal in the home and it's in a public house. So everyone knows about it. It's just wild. Um, the moon has a nice connection with the sun. Oh, she's so charming. Sun and moon trine. Like, I think she can get it together. I think when it comes to her work, because the sun is in the sixth house of work, um, she's a workaholic. She loves, like, even though she is um, a Cancer, she's a very Virgo Cancer because of that sixth house, and she's incredibly critical of people, which works. She's <laughs> it works for her work. It does because she's up there criticizing people and chatting shit about people, which is so entertaining. And the fact that the sun in the sixth house trines that moon her emotional responses in line with the criticisms that she gives is incredibly entertaining it's what makes her money it wasn't just the gossip it's the fact that she was just so opinionated and would get emotionally invested in these stories I thought it was fantastic um mm, uh I think with the Jupiter the midheaven ruler in her third house down here in opposition with her moon her career got in the way of of her family life. I think there was, there were times definitely where her, she would talk too much and her family, like her son or her husband or her, her parents or her siblings would come to her and say, you said some crap on your show. And she probably got in trouble for that, like revealed too much. I feel like that was probably an issue. Um, Home is very difficult for her. She loves family. She loves her home. But she, I think she needs work. I think because that sun, if you look here, see this sun, you see the blue lines that are coming from the sun. They, the sun here is the alleviation point, that sixth house sun, that, that work, the workaholism is almost like it's the thing that relieves her stress. It's a creative venture for her. As much stress as it produces, it also helps alleviate some of her, um, you know, bottled up 
stuff. So I think her work is her art. Like the sun is creative expression. The sun is your ego. So for it to be shining in the sixth house, she's going to be known for her work and she needs work almost. That's why this is so sad because she wants to get back her show or have a podcast and she can't. It's really, at the moment she can't. Hopefully she can get better. I hope she gets some stem cell stuff. That might help her. Anyway, it's just an idea. It's just a thought that ran through my head. Um, the health issues, yes, uh, the addiction stuff. So the moon, Neptune, addiction, like trying to numb pain, trying to get rid of it through substances. That happens because Neptune governs those things. Neptune is like drunk. Okay. But what else, what also tells me that she has trouble with her body and her mind, mental and physical health is like a very harshly aspected Mercury because the Mercury governs your mental functions and your bodily functions. And look at all these red lines, um, that are coming out of it. Uh, Jupiter and Neptune, which are generational planets, Jupiter sort of a generational planet. Um, they're squaring that Mercury. So that's why I'm not surprised that she is sick. It's almost like this was something I don't out of her control. I think her addictive behaviors, because that Neptune is Neptune and the moon are squaring her Mercury. Her addictive behaviors, her trying to numb the pain of her existence, has led to her body breakdown, right? Moon and Neptune addiction, moon and Neptune conjunction in the ninth house, addiction trying to escape her problems, squaring off with Mercury, which is the body and the mind. She, through bad habits, has perpetuated whatever health issues she was already born with or programmed to have I think that the, and, and Mercury is the mind Mercury is the body and she has aphasia and that affects both of those things right is that right like it's a form of dementia is it aphasia Bruce Willis has it so um and, and I did and I I did hear her son say in an interview that they think it's alcohol related dementia I don't know how accurate that is or how true it is, but I just I saw her son mention that and I wouldn't be surprised. Might not be, but I wouldn't be surprised. So there's it's a lot. There's a lot here. Poor little Mercury. Her Mercury is really well aspected. It's sextiled with her Venus and her Mars in a conjunction. Oh, sex and love are very intertwined to, for her. Because Venus is the phallus. No, Mars is the phallus. Venus is the heart when they're in a conjunction together. I think. Not to say someone with these placements can't be promiscuous. I mean, it is Gemini, but like, I think sex and love are very intertwined, even if they are in Gemini, really. Um, that's why she, people with this placement, whatever sign it's in, have to be careful with who they sleep with. Um, Mars and Venus in a sextile with Mercury. Again, and Mercury rules Gemini. Remember that? So she's a great communicator. She's a clear communicator. Like when it comes to... I think dealing dealing with people when she's not sick or addicted or anything like that. I think if you got rid of that, I think she's a very good communicator with with that sextile. And I think she's a very charming person. I feel like with this placement, she knows how to be aggressive and mean. Don't get me wrong. I get that. But I think there's a lot of warmth and kindness with this sextile and just – very likable most of the time anyway. When she's not out of her mind drunk or high or anything like that, I think she's a very lovely human being with, with, with this energy. Um, Pluto and Uranus in the seventh house intercepted. These are um, Pluto sextiling Neptune and Pluto's trining Ju Jupiter. So that's like a nice – they're all generational planets, so it's all – would it be a fame indicator? Uranus is also here. Because Plu like Uranus is like a public planet. Like it's a visible public planet. It's a fame indicator. Like her, 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 her words, her work make her famous, but so do her problems perpetuate that fame as well. Um, now, Pluto in the seventh house people, they transform the most through romantic partnerships. They transform the most through platonic partnerships as well. They also they can also have a lot of enemies, to be, to be honest. Like, if you've got the planet of death and transformation in that seventh house of partnerships, you will make friends, but you will make enemies, and it will be – it's hard. Wherever you, wherever you have Pluto, it is difficult, no matter what, right? Um, so I think – there have been people that have abruptly cut her off or 
you know, friends have turned into enemies. Uranus is here. So um, she knows a lot of people, like, because Uranus governs the 11th house and the network, right? So to have it in the 7th house, she's got a, like, she just knows a lot of people. She works in partnership with a lot of people, not just, um, like, romantically dating, whatever, but, like, this is a professional thing as well. Um, yeah. Uh, let's have a look at this North Node in Cancer. It's at a pretty early degree. It, it It's not in a conjunction with her son, but it is in the same sign as her son. And the, her sixth house cusp lies in Cancer. The North Node lies in Cancer. Sixth house is health. Destiny is health. Learning. Getting sober. Taking care of herself. Learning to... Her South Node is in that 11th, 12th house. The 11th house is a public house. So I can read that as her being out in the world and gossiping and knowing lots of people. If I read it as a south node in the 11th, that's what she's familiar with. And it's also in Capricorn. So it's like working to the bone, like work, work, work. And it's in a public house of talk, talk, talk and socialize, which makes sense because she was a disc jockey. Um, but that south node also plays into her 12th house of addiction and secrets and all sorts of, you know, all sorts of dark behaviors. And there's nothing here for her. And where she's now got to go here. She's got to get it together and nurture herself because cancer is nurturing. Like stop working or at least take, you know, just take less work and learn to be in your home and enjoy soft pillows and velvet couches and, you know, lovely views from your penthouse New York flat. You know what I mean? Like just really enjoy life and take it easy and enjoy your money. Like that's what she has to learn how to do. Although there are some complications with money as well. So and that could have a lot to do with this Pluto Uranus stuff and all these squares with Saturn as well. She's going through a Saturn return. We'll get there. Um, but yeah, she needs to learn how to nurture herself, take care of herself, feed herself the right foods, get clean, stop taking drugs. Can't even be California sober with this woman. She needs to really look after herself. Um, she's going through a Saturn return out right now. Her Saturn is in Pisces. She started having this trouble when, uh, Saturn was going through her 12th and first house, which is almost like it's the shakedown. And now she's, she's trying to get back on her feet. So, um, yeah, not an easy transit. Saturn is not well aspected to anything. It squares her moon and opposes, it's got all these like angry energy. So it's in her first house of identity. It's intercepted. That's her Saturn's intercepted. That Usually that's like a father that's not really present or there's not a lot of structure in her life, which makes sense because she is an addict. Not a lot of structure in her life. Not like father wasn't very pre present, even though she talks very well of him. I'm wondering what he's done. Anyone know? Can you put it in the comments? Why is her satin intercepted? Why is daddy gone? Why is she marry? Why did she marry a piece of poo? Why did she marry a piece of poo of a man? If your daddy's great, then you would have married a great man. Usually, not all the time, but usually. <sighs> anyway, I really... <sighs> rooting for you, Wendy. We love you, Wendy. Well, I love you, Wendy. And if anyone wants to talk trash about Wendy Williams and you want to put ugly comments like you do with the Meghan Markle video, I'm just going to delete them because I don't let ugly people with ugly opinions who are degenerates on my YouTube. This is not a democracy. This is a chartocracy. Okay? Keep it kind. Be nice. If you don't want to be nice and you want to be mean, just keep it to yourself. Don't waste a moment of your life because I'm going to delete it anyway. Okay? We wish Wendy Williams health and wealth and love. Um, and if she's out there and you see this, Message me. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, I think that's about it today. I think that's about it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, please uh, like, subscribe, support me. It's going to help me. All the readings I do are linked below. Thank you. Love you. Bye.